All right, let's get this over and done with. The new dungeon, known as Ghost of the Deep. Uh, this is going to be my perspective on the entire thing. And from the title of the video, you can probably already tell, I am not exactly thrilled by this at the end of it. But before I go into why I'm not exactly thrilled a bit, I'm actually just going to say straight off the bat, the dungeon looks amazing and there is a lot of secret little things in it that actually make it really interesting to play. Not to mention the reveal at the end as well. Obviously, if you've played the dungeon, you'll know what's at the end when you have to fight the final boss. Or if you've seen a dungeon guide on it already, you'll already know that there is a certain thing there that surprised me when I first got to it but now it's magic kind of worn off so I'm going to look at this a bit more critically. So the initial clear that we did took us about an hour and a half which is not a bad clear time for a dungeon but one of the most annoying things about this dungeon was the fact that the bosses are actually so tanky now that it's becoming a joke. And if that wasn't bad enough the final boss actually has such a long-winded mechanic in order to get to DPS that I really just don't think there's any point in me trying to solo flawless it. Obviously we get the hardcore PvP players like Esoteric for example who will just solo flawless everything but for me I am not going to invest hours of my life into doing this when the boss literally has 12 and a half million health. And this was literally the same situation with Spire of the Watcher as well. The boss is just way too tough when it doesn't need to be. And honestly, I don't know why Bungie's doing this because ever since Season of the Seraph, they've just been all about difficulty for some weird reason, which I'm all for. I like things being a bit more difficult and you having to actually get skillful at the game to progress it and be even better. But when Bungie's translation of difficult becomes just give the boss a ton of health and a long mechanic in order to get to the DPS phase, that's where I start drawing the line, especially when they start nerfing literally everything that can clear them. So just pointing out two solo flawless clears from two different YouTubers. All the players did a solo flawless with their hunter and they are basically abusing a build that is a little bit broken for the hunters at the minute, which is the arc build. And in a nutshell, the way it basically works is you max out combination blow, add in a shotgun with one-two punch, and you can do a lot of damage which also causes a bolt of lightning to strike all nearby enemies. And you know this is busted because you are pretty much taking down any Lucent Hive champion in one combo. So not only that, the Gathering Storm Super is also very strong which makes it a bigger bonus for the art build in general. And then you can also throw an Assassin's Cow which turns you invisible and also gives you some healing as well. And whilst it is intricate to make a build like that, the fact that you've actually got to make a build that busted in order to solo an encounter, it should just not be the case at all. Looking over to Esoteric side, he did it with a solar type. Titan. And if you're experienced in the game, you'll probably already know what kind of build he used because he was using the Throne Hammer, which is notoriously doing 100,000 damage every throw. Not only that, when you get a kill with this hammer, it also heals you. So not only can he do 100k to the boss with every hammer throw, every kill he gets with the said hammer throw as well will also restore his health. Basically making an invincible Titan, and not to mention he can also use his super, which will spawn sunspots, which also heal him. And if you've been playing Destiny 2 for a while now, you would know that the throwing solid hammer that the Titans have has been busted for a long time. But it's still going back to the original point is that these players have have to use these busted builds in order to solo these bosses. And then you look a couple seasons down the line and these builds get nerfed and then you start thinking, how are you supposed to solo flawless this dungeon without it taking 10 or 15 damage phases to actually be one of the bosses? And this is where Budgie's really got to sit down and think about how they want to do the difficulty from now on because slapping on a ton of health onto a boss just isn't the solution and making the DPS set up even longer is not the solution either. But that is pretty much the rant over. I'm going to try and leave this on a positive note because whilst it is really frustrating that the bosses have a ton of health, the dungeon itself looks really good and they've actually been quite creative with the in-betweens as well because what we're used to seeing is some kind of jumping puzzle in the dungeon this time you've got a diving puzzle because you have to navigate yourself down through the deeps which I was quite happy to do to be honest because it's something completely different and it's a bit unique in its own right as well not only that there is some secrets in the dungeon as well like for example the six terminals that are at the starting encounter if you didn't know about that then Go look for them because it's quite amusing what you get for them. But I will openly say if you are thinking of doing your first clear of this dungeon and you haven't tried it already, I would highly recommend that you bring Arbalist and also maybe some other linear fusion rifle to go with it. And that's because Arbalist allegedly destroys the shields off the bosses straight away. Whether that's going to be incredibly useful for solo players or not, I am not sure. But that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, remember to leave a like down below and tell me what you think about the dungeon below in the comments. I would love to hear it. But I will see you all in the next video.